Hey y'all, welcome back to Learn for Needle. My name is Jess, and today we're going to be learning how to make these awesome pajama pants that a lot of people on some of the Girl Scout Facebook pages have seen. Um, so these are mine. They are super comfy. I think I wore them at least three days in a row because they were just so warm and fuzzy. So, now I know everybody has been wanting to make their own, um, so we're going to start from the beginning. So I'm going to use my daughter's pants just because they're smaller and it'll make this video go by a lot faster. So what you want to do is take the pants that you want to do and you want to fold them in half lengthwise. All right. And try and like, you know how it has that little crotch part? Kind of try and get that slope out there too. All right. And then I'm going to use um, this cotton for my uh, for my daughter's pants because she already has fleece pants in the those colors. So I just want to do something different. I'm actually going to do it in this polar bear fabric, never mind. Um, I'm just going to show you how to cut it out on the Girl Scout fabric. So what you want to do is take your fabric, you know how it's 45 inches wide, and it's uh, folded in the middle here, all right? So instead of just laying our pants just smack dab anywhere, we're going to do it so where we are using the least amount of fabric so we have a lot more stuff to play with because playing with your fabric is just so much better. All right, so what we're gonna do is open up your fabric and you're gonna to want to fold it over so you still have a folded edge to it, but you want enough space to where when you put your pants down, you've got space on either side of it. Now to line up where that folded edge is going to go, we're going to take the long side. So not the part where it goes on your butt, but the ones that go on the side of your leg. And we're going to take that, we're going to go down probably about uh, two to three inches from the top of our fabric, just so that we have enough for our waist belt. And because I know these ones are skin tight, to my daughter, and if I did them just exactly the same as these, they're not going to fit her. Um, that's how I did the fleece pants for her, and I had to add like little extra flares on the leg parts just so they'd actually fit her. So we're going to take this long edge, go down about three to four inches, and line it up right along that folded edge. All right, and once you have that, and this is why I did her pants because they're a lot smaller and you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna pull it up here so we can see the bottom. All right, so on the bottom edge here where the cuff links are, we're going to go down about two inches. That way she has some growing room. Um, and you're going to cut just straight along and then you're gonna come out about two inches again and just keep going two inches out from everywhere. And now when you get to this top part, you're just gonna go straight up. You're not gonna cut it right there. You're just gonna go straight up. So in the end, you will have something like this. So it's got about the, the two inches on the bottom and around the sides. It's okay if you're not perfect. Um, if you were, perfectionist, you could have it laid out where it's just one pants leg, you go around, uh, pin it all in, you cut around it um, with a ruler and everything, but if you've seen all my other videos, I don't do that. Um, so now we can take these pants, toss them to the side. You'll want to have two sections of uh, the folded pants, right? Because we got two legs, so we need two sides. All right. So now 
and set one on the sides away. So for our first stitch, we're going to, let's see, so since these are cotton, we gotta do something to these bottoms here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it over and you're going to flip it up to get one layer and you're gonna flip it up again. So the reason why I do two flips right here is so that you don't have all those ugly little um, threads on the bottom. So we're gonna do that for both of them. Find my foot pedal. Oops. Probably helped if I turn my machine on. Now if you're using a flannel or the fleece, you don't really need to do a hem like this um, because they don't really fray that much. Oops. I still had it on buttonhole. Alright. Ooh, and you're still on that. Apparently I did not take it off buttonhole yesterday. <laughs> There we go. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other hem. So I'm not back stitching at all on these just because we're going to do another seam that will cover the ends anyways. Alright, so now I've got that seam on there. So now we're going to put right sides together. So for mine it would be this sparkly side. And just match everything back up. Now for our second stitch, we're going to do from your point where it's underneath your butt all the way down to the hem that you just did. So that will make the actual leg portion. We're going to do that for both of the legs. Now for this, I am going to back stitch. Just looking at my stitches, they looked a little funky. Much better. And make sure you back stitch at the end as well. Come on. My machine being funny with me today. Alright, so this is about a quarter of an inch seam. Um, you don't really need much more than that. Um, if you had a serger machine, you could totally just serge everything and be done with it. Um, I have a serger. Never played with it yet. Um, Alright. So now we're going to go to our second leg and I have to find my bobbin thread again apparently. They decided to go missing. Oops. They want decided to go really missing. Okay. All right. So again, just from the part where it goes underneath your butt all the way to the hem.
Alrighty. Just gonna trim up all these little tails so we don't have to do it later. Alright. So now's the like hard part, I guess, because of how you have to situate everything so it actually like folds right. So let me see if I can remember how it goes. Think, think. Right now, it goes like this. Alright, so you want to open up that top part. Put it right here. Alright, so you kind of got it open like this, and then you've got it open like this. And you just basically want to put both the right sides together just straight down on top of each other. That way, when we match everything up, the seams are poking towards the inside. Forgot about that on the first pair of pants that I did and got halfway down this part and realized that the seam was on the wrong side. So, learn from my mistakes. Make sure the seams are pointing towards the inside of the fabric. And what you want to do is just line up everything. And it's going to get a little funky down here. Oops. That is my alarm that it's time to go to Girl Scout soon. Alright. So we're going to start on this part that's closest to us. So I'm just going to flip it over. Legs are pointed towards me. Make sure those are all lined up straight and make sure you back stitch and just start stitching. So when you get to the part where both of the pants meet, so it's four seams right next to each other, um, definitely go ahead and backstitch a couple of times just so that, you know, they're kids, they're going to move a lot. Um, and backstitching just a couple of times in that part where those four seams meet um, will give it a little bit more durability so you're not like sitting there and they sit down and just everything is showing. And also make sure, um, once you do get to that point, that you look where your bottom leg is um, so that you're not stitching through that as you're stitching through this seam. So it gets a little funky of like how you have to like move your fabric around. Actually, let me point the camera just up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. like how crazy it has to get to be able to get into there. Okay, so that was my couple of back stitches right there at that seam. Alright, and now for the home stretch. Make sure you know where your pants legs are so that they're not getting sewn up as well. Yay! Alright. So, once you're done, you should have something like that. It'll look like pants! Yay! Hopefully it looks like pants when you're done. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
cut these threads off. That one's good. All right. So the moment of truth. We're going to flip it inside out or outside in. Make sure everything looks all nice and cool. Look at those pants. Oh my goodness. They are super duper cute. All right, so now the fun part, putting on that elastic. So there's two different elastics. There is the regular elastic. Um, this is really great. Like in the skirt that I'm wearing right now, I'm using just this regular elastic just because I'm here at my sewing machine. And so what I like to do is um, I'll have the hem done and everything like where the elastic casing is and I'll go ahead and wrap it around me and use a uh, safety pen to mark where I need to actually sew it um, but for like if you're doing pants for grandkids or nieces nephews somebody that's not physically there with you um, there is this awesome buttonhole elastic. So look at this. Alright, so this is buttonhole elastic. And the reason why it's called buttonhole elastic is because it's got holes in it. And it can fit buttons. So you'll see this a lot of times in kids' clothing. Um, especially nowadays, it's like becoming like really popular to have this already in kids' clothing. Um, and they actually sell it by the yard. I got this white and black um, for under 20 bucks and it only took like three days to get to my house, which was pretty awesome. Yay for Amazon Prime free um, or free trial. Um, so we are going to be using the buttonhole elastic for this. Um, if you're using the regular elastic, just follow along and I will tell you what part to not do. All right, so these are pretty big for my little four-year-old. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the fabric that's already on here um, to do the, I don't know, well, maybe. Hmm, let me call her down real quick. Snuggles, yeah. other one. Can you send her down? Okay. So I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, that's really big for a four-year-old, but I'm not sure. So we'll see. We're going to see what she says, and then we'll figure out if I need to put an extra waistband on it. Snuggles, you coming? Okay. She's very slow at getting down the stairs. Okay, come here. Look at these. What happened to your dress? Um, <laughs> come here. I didn't have to tie it again. <sighs> I didn't know. <laughs> Alright, turn around. Let me see you real quick. Alright. Alright, lift this up. Hmm. Actually, yeah. Well, hmm. It's like, I'm just going to go ahead and put a waistband on it just because it's very close. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Did you like these pants? Yeah. They're for you. I know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So she said there needs to be a little bit extra on it so it be it bees more tighter. She's silly. She's four. All right, so to put the waistband on this, um, we're going to put those up there. All right. 
but I'm not caring because the print is going to go the other way instead of like up and down that has gone. If you want to do it to where the print is going all the same way, totally do that. Um, these are for a four year old, so I don't think she'll care. So what you want to do is take your pants that you've finished so far and we're going to fold over our fabric right. and we're going to lay out our pants just directly on that fabric and we're going to scoot it up a bit. There we go. All right. So I've got about an inch to two inches on the one side, just so that I have enough for when it comes to the front. Um, I've got enough to sew over it to make it look nice. All right, and then we're going to grab this and grab this. All right, so we're gonna want a um, about a four inch rectangle um, by however many inches Oops, you need for your waistband. So I'm just gonna trim off the oops, trim off the uh, selvage there. I'm gonna go ahead and get that four inches on that side. And since my ruler is actually four inches, then I'm just gonna go straight across. All right, so now we've got our waistband for our pants. Um, and what you wanna do is find the center, which center is easy for me since I just folded it. Okay. So that'll be on either this center or this center, whichever seam you wanna start it at. All right, and then you need to figure out where your buttonholes are going to be. Um, I kinda of like them to where they're like more in the front. Um, so like, say this is the front, so it's gonna be about here, just so that it kind of comes around the sides so you don't have it like looking odd on the sides there. All right, so we're going to take our pen and fold our fabric over just like how it would be if we were actually putting the, um, the waistband on. And I'm just gonna come in probably like to the middle of that front area and just put a pin. And then I'm going to fold the fabric so that way my buttonholes on each side are the same distance apart. All right, so now we can put our pants out of the way for a little bit. So now we get the fun part of putting in a buttonhole. Um, for fleece, I found that you didn't really need to actually do the buttonhole stitch like on your machine. Um, but since this is cotton, definitely going to. So to do that, I'm going to fold this over in half. Just do a little bit of a finger press. So that's how wide our waistband is going to be. Now at our pins over here, I'm just going to leave that pin there. I'm going to take my, oh, there you are. I'm going to take my uh, water erasable marker. These are quite awesome. Um, this one is by Clover and it's a fine. You can see that. Um, and I know that my elastic is an inch. So we're just going to actually use the ruler. And we're just going to make a line on that inch mark. And then, because you're not going to see that line once it gets onto the sewing machine, I'm just going to make a line on the top and then on the bottom. So it looks like one big eye. Let's see if you can see that in there. Sort of, maybe. 
No, not really. <laughs> um, but there's a big eye there. And then we're going to go on to the other side and do the same thing. And you kind of want to space it out um, between your flappy bit and the folded bit um, of where this one inch line is going to be. All right. So I got my eyes on each spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and unfold this, come over here to my machine and get this buttonhole stitch. If you don't know how to do a buttonhole stitch, um, I'm trying to think. One of my earlier videos, um, it's like basics of the sewing machine room or something like that. Um, it has a tutorial in that video on how to do a buttonhole stitch. I'll go ahead and link it down below once this video is over. Oops. There's one buttonhole. I'm gonna get this other one done. She's doing funny noises. <laughs> all right, so I've got both my buttonholes on there. Let me go ahead and trim up all of these tails. <laughs> what? You cut them tails. Well, they are tails. They're the tail ends of the thread. I have these. No, you don't need candy. Now, find my seam ripper. It's a seam ripper. All right, so now you're gonna take your seam ripper and bust out those that fabric that's in between those seams very carefully. And that side. Alright. So now I've got my buttonholes for my elastic. Move all that stuff out of the way. Alright. So we're going to take our pants again and make sure that. Once you've folded your fabric down again, um, that when you place it on here, that your buttonholes are facing up. Um, that way, when you finish putting your waistband on, that the buttonholes will be on the inside. Learn from my experience. <laughs> I had it all uh, pinned around the waistband on another pair and realize that the buttonholes were on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this all the way around. And it's best to do uh, one full side and then flip it around just because everything is laying flat already. Right. Mm 
making sure it bleeds nicely once it goes around that corner of the uh, the pants too. Okay. And it seems that my buttonholes came out closer to the front than what I expected. What? Um, it's a some toys and um the Halloween stuff. Yeah, they're not yours. Oh, you talking about in there? Yeah. What? Um, they were little critters. Oh, no, they're not yours, so. All right, so. What are they? I don't know. All right, so. What I'm going to do is start. Just, um, I'm trying to do a video, them. little girl. I'm just looking at them. Okay, we'll just you can just look at them. Don't touch them though. All right, so what we're going to do is start at the buttonhole on either side. Doesn't really matter. And that is where we're going to start stitching. We don't want to start stitching right at the front, like where the um, the open ends are, just because we have to like put them inside of each other so that it looks nice. Oops. Make sure your machine's set back to uh, regular straight stitch. You know, like how I forgot to do it at the beginning of the video. Still forgot to do it after I did the button holes. Alright, definitely make sure that you back stitch and then um, just take out the pins as you go along. Oh, and also, if you're doing the regular elastic, don't do buttonholes. I'm sure you figured that out, but just to make sure, don't do the buttonholes if you're just doing the regular elastic. other buttonhole. Go ahead and get these tails out of here. There's a lot of things in here. Yeah, leave them alone. Alright, so take off my little list. Alright, so now we can go ahead and flip up this waistband. And see how adorable it is. Out of here. All right. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and get these buttons on. Now I found that with this size buttonhole, that my I don't know how little it ones. Okay. Are these mm, no. Use these ones. All right. I found that my little, what are these? They're half inch. So like little half inch buttons. They're just two hole buttons. Um, you can use whatever buttons you have in your stash. This is just what I had. Um, and then you're just going to want to uh, stitch them on um, just like you would any other button um, and do it Probably about an inch, inch and a half away from your buttonhole towards your open end. So like these ones, I'm going to go about here. I don't know if you can see. Put this back down again. Ooh. All right, I'm just going to stick my needle through here. 
Now I'm just using whatever thread that was in my needle last. Um, I was sewing on patches, so this is just the thread that I had on my needle. Um, you could totally just use the thread that's out of your machine, um, or you can use DMC floss. This is a DMC um, floss as well. Now if you don't know how to do a button, I think in that same video that I was talking about before, um, with the basics of sewing, um, I think with the buttonhole uh, tutorial that I did, that it does go into actually stitching on a button. And it has gotten dark outside. I can't believe it's 5 o'clock and it is, it's getting pretty dark out. Alright, you want to do that to both sides. So if you guys have any other videos that you'd like me to do, any other tutorials, if you have a question about a pattern, um, any of that, definitely leave a comment below. I will gladly look into whatever kind of video you want me to do um, that pertains to uh, crafting, quilting, uh, sewing, all that kind of stuff. Um, this video was brought on just because people really liked the pajama pants that I did. Um, so I just had to wait to get this buttonhole elastic in because none of my uh, fabric stores around me had buttonhole elastic in stores. Alrighty. So we got our buttons on there. So now we're going to kind of like place these inside of each other. Like one on top, one on the bottom. Let's flip this back around. Alright. Yeah, I totally messed up on the placement of those uh, buttonholes. Alright. Oh well. Alright, so I cut off a little bit off of one side um, just because it was a little bit too much fabric and I think I'm gonna have to do the same thing for the other side. Um, just because of where I put the buttonholes and the buttons. Alright, you want to just kind of like feel around. Oops, I totally forgot that that's open end. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get this seam pressed down here. So I forgot to close up one side of the waistband just because it's going to be on the outside. It's going to be showing. So that's what I was just doing. All right. And now that that's laid flat, I'm just going to put a pin in it just so it'll stay flat. And we're going to go ahead and sew that up. Alrighty. Find the tails. There they are. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little st stitch right here at the top where we put the two ends together, just so that 
so that doesn't come apart. get all these tails out of here. Alrighty. So now it's time for the elastic. So since we don't have to go all the way around, um, we're just going to take the measurement without it being stretched. Remember that. Don't stretch it. Um, of one side. And then Let's see. Trying to figure out how much. Probably just do about three quarters. Um, so just about that much, since we don't have to go all the way to the front, and we're going to be cinching it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. What are you doing? You know what my thing just did? Oh, it wanted to go to Twitch. All right, so. To start threading this, we're going to go ahead and hook one side of our elastic onto our little button. That way when we pull, it's not going to come undone. And then I'm going to take a safety pin. If you have a bodkin, which mine is apparently upstairs in my makeup bag. I don't know why it's up there in my makeup bag, but that's just where it's sitting right now. Um, but a large safety pin totally works. Make sure that when you go in, that your elastic is flat. So we're just going to go ahead and go in. Make sure it gets all the way in there. And then just start pulling it through. So if you're doing just your regular elastic, um, you could you would not have to do the buttons, of course. Um, but then you would just kind of, before you closed up this seam right here, um, you would go ahead and pull your elastic through, um, put it on yourself or whoever it's made for, and um, go ahead and sew your elastics together. Like you'll take, you'll take your elastics and put them on top of each other, and then you'll sew um, back and forth about four to five times, um, just with a straight stitch. That way, those are together, and then you just sew it up. So, let me get this all straightened out here. So here is the finished product with the buttonholes elastic in there. They are super cute. Do you like them? Yeah. Yeah? You gonna wear them tonight to Girl Scouts? No. Why not? Because, um... Uh... Because why? Because, um, there's some soles on it. Tiny soles. And I will make right. it. She's um, being silly. Alright. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you learned a lot about how to do buttonhole elastic, how to do these pajama pants. Um, make sure you share this video, that way everybody knows how to make awesome pajama pants. Um, I will get the link to uh, my Etsy page so you can order pajama pants of the Girl Scout themed fabric, um, either the fleece or the cotton. Um, and thanks for watching.